tutorial, we're going to build a text receiver which is going to intercept all incoming text messages on our mobile device so that our app can process them. To do this, we're going to first need to make some changes to the Android manifest file. So if you go over to the manifest folder and then open that up and click on this Android manifest.xml file, you'll see a file that looks like this, but I've added a few Android permissions to allow the app to work with SMS. These are shown here. And it's important that these permissions be added outside the application tag. I've also added this receiver tag. And this needs to be placed inside the application tag, but outside of the activity tag. And what this receiver uh, tag does is it's going to define this new class called text receiver and set it up as a receiver for Android events and with this intent filter we're going to say that we're going to capture these SMS received events. This priority that I'm setting here to 999 is worth discussing. When these SMS events are received the Android operating system has to send that event to multiple activities or applications sitting inside the machine and there is some question as to what order or who should get the SMS text messages first and based on this priority level it's going to determine who gets it first who gets it second etc the priority level has to be an integer greater than negative 1000 and less than positive 1000 by setting the priority to 999 what we're doing is we're telling the operating system that our app is going to be the first one to receive these SMS messages as they are captured by the operating system. We are now going to build this class called Text Receiver. Okay, the shell of Text Receiver has been built for us by Android Studio. And now Android Studio is complaining that the override methods are not present because Broadcast Receiver is an abstract class. So if I click on it, I can ask Android Studio to set up the shells for the methods. This onReceive method, as you've probably guessed, is going to be the only method we're going to write for this class. And it's going to get triggered every time a new text message is received by the mobile device. What you're looking at now is the entire receiver code for this app. You can see it's fairly small, but it's extremely dense. We're going to explain the different parts of this uh, receiver. And to understand it, we need to first understand this thing called a PDU. If we look at the wiki for the PDU, we see it stands for Protocol Data Unit. And it is part of the seven layer OSI stack and that is used to communicate uh, between computers. And uh, what this really represents is the fact that when we send text messages from one computer to another, it does not look in the same way as it does when we look at a text message. When we see a text message that says, hi, how are you? There's obviously a lot more that gets sent other than just the letters uh, that we see in ASCII. There's got to be some header information. There's got to be some timestamp information. There's got to be information about who sent the message, all those things. And the standard for sending it is something called a PDU. Back in our app, what we have to do is we have to take the message that was received as a PDU and strip out the parts that we want, specifically the message body and the originating address. And that's what this code does. Now, there are some cases when you're programming with Android, the, the code is so complicated and uh, so hard to understand, you're, you're better off just going to a place like Stack Overflow and uh, looking for a similar type of code and just cutting and pasting it in. And this, unfortunately, is one of those cases. Uh, I'm going to try and explain some of this to you, what's going on in here, but basically what we're doing here is we're taking these PDUs that are coming in into the machine and we're parsing them and we're extracting the message body and the originating address and taking those and using it to construct a new text message. We are then passing that text message onto the main activity 
using this static update list. And the main activity call here is going to take this text message, it's going to send an automatic reply, and it's going to add this message to the, the list that's going to be driving the main screen. I'm going to take uh, a quick look through this code and try and explain to you the various pieces. Each time a text message is received, this onReceive method is triggered, and it's passed this thing called an intent. And the intent has a bunch of information that's wrapped up inside of it, and you can get at that information by calling this getExtras method, and that puts the information into something called a bundle. And then that bundle can be unbundled, and you can extract from it these PDUs that we were discussing. And then in this for loop here basically takes those PDUs and strips out the information for each of the message body and the originating phone numbers. If you're wondering why we have a for loop at all, it's because certain text messages which are very large are broken up into multiple PDUs or multiple smaller messages when they're sent from one place to another. And so this for loop basically uh, can take a multi-segment message and turn it into a single message. Notice this line of code that has been crossed out by Android Studio. Android Studio is trying to tell us from this crossing out pattern that this line of code has been deprecated. Deprecated means that this type of code is no longer used or this method call in this case is no longer used and the reason why typically is that some newer version of that code has come out. We are actually using both versions of the create PDU command uh, one for newer versions of the operating system and we have maintained this older deprecated version in case the uh, device that we're running on is older and so that's why we are going to tolerate uh, having this crossed out pattern which is still going to be useful for older devices okay it's time now to test our app we can't use the emulator to test it because of the texting so what we're going to do is we're going to install this app on our phone, on my phone, and I'm going to run it and I'm going to uh, run some software on the phone to capture what's going on on the screen so I can show it to you in this tutorial and then we're also going to be using the Google Voice uh, console on my computer to uh, communicate with the phone uh, back and forth. And now what you're seeing is my phone and I'm looking for that app that I just installed. There it is. I'm going to click on that. And at the bottom, you can see that it, there's a toast message showing me that the default is my driving message. Now, here I've switched over to Google Console. And I'm going to send a message to my phone. And hopefully, I'll get an auto reply back saying that uh, I can't speak to you right now because I'm driving. So here is the message I'm sending from Google Voice. And you can see that message has now been sent. Now looking back at the phone, you can see it's received that message. There's some toast messages coming up showing what I got. And look, there's the reply that it's sending back saying that it can't, uh, you can't talk right now because you're driving. And now you can see on the Google console I've received the reply saying that uh, I'm busy. Okay, let's go ahead and send a second message. We want to make sure that we can display more than one message at a time on our uh, phone interface. So here's another message being sent by Google uh, Console. And then looking back on the phone, we're going to just wait a second here, and the other message should show up. There it is. And also, we should send another message back saying, hey, I still can't talk to you because there it is. I still can't talk to you because I'm busy driving. So the app is working well. Mm -hmm.